there's a few housekeeping rules before we kick off um, everyone on, on the call. If you could turn your videos off, that would be fantastic. It just avoids any distractions whilst our speakers are speaking. Great, so I'm going to kick off. Uh, so hi everyone, thank you for joining our webinar today um, and also thank you so much for expressing an interest in our healthcare ethics and law course here at the University of Manchester. So as you can see from this slide, the healthcare ethics and law course is 100% online and it's developed to fit around your lifestyle and circumstances. So I'm really lucky to be joined by our two course directors. Caroline Hoyle and Dr. Catherine Stanton, who are gonna be providing you with an insight into our healthcare ethics and law course here at the university and what you can expect should you choose to join us. Now, um, before we go into uh, a few introductions, again, just a few housekeeping rules. If you could make sure your videos are turned off for the duration of the webinar, that would be great. And also if you could remain muted as well, Again, that avoids kind of distractions when Caroline and Catherine are presenting. We have a chat functionality, uh, which I will be monitoring throughout the, the presentation. Please feel free to kind of drop any questions that you have in the chat box. And towards the end, we'll cover those um, as best as we can. So a little bit about um, me, for those of you who don't know, know who I am. My name is Daisy James. I'm the course advisor for this particular course. So what that means is, I look after student recruitment, uh, the student recruitment side for this course. Now I've got over four years of experience within higher education and the student recruitment space. I moved to Manchester in February, um, but I worked down in London for an art auction house prior to that. Here at the university, I manage a variety of online and blended CPD courses, postgraduate certificates and master's degree programs at the university. So my main responsibility is delivering webinars such as this one but also conducting individual consultations with prospective students like yourself. And I can see a few students on today's call. Um, I've actually had some consultations over Zoom with, so thank you for joining. Um, but my main role is to really offer support and guidance for you at every stage of your application journey so that you can really make that informed decision about whether this course is the right fit for you um, at this point in your kind of career. So I'm going to hand you over to Caroline, who's going to introduce herself and I'll leave it up to Caroline and Catherine to, to kind of lead the, the rest of the webinar. Thanks, Daisy. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Caroline Hoyle and I am one of the uh, course directors for the distance learning postgraduate programmes in healthcare ethics and law. Um, and you'll meet Catherine, my colleague, in a minute. Um, so we, we just thought we'd introduce ourselves briefly first and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk through um, some of the features of our programmes and, and application process and assessment and so on. Um, so I am a senior lecturer in criminal and medical law. Um, I teach the core law module on the um, distance learning healthcare ethics and law programmes, which is medico legal problems. Um, and I also teach on um, the campus-based um, master's programmes as well, and on um, some of the undergraduate law programmes at the University of Manchester. Um, I've worked at Manchester since uh, 2014. Um, before that, um, I've worked at um, other higher education institutions. I've been teaching in higher education for about 20 years now. Um, I am a solicitor by background, um, although I don't practice law uh, currently, but I'm a clinical lead at the university's uh, legal advice centre and I supervise students who provide pro bono advice to members of the public at our legal advice centre. Uh, in terms of my academic interests, um, I have a particular interest in the law relating to medical treatment of children and in relation to assisted reproduction and surrogacy. Um, so I'll hand over now to Catherine um, to introduce herself. Hi. Hello everyone, I'm Catherine Stanton and thank you for joining our webinar today. Um, like Caroline, my background is as a solicitor. Um, I then decided after practicing for a while to go back into academia and I actually did this programme on campus. So I'm one of the graduates of the Health Ethics and Law programme. I enjoyed it so much, carried on to do a PhD and then have worked at Manchester ever since then. Um, I was involved in the start of this online course. I've worked on this since 2002. 
I'm a course tutor on two of the main um, courses that you study, Medical Legal Problems and International Issues. Um, I've got quite a broad area of research interest, um, focusing particularly on genetic information, confidentiality, privacy, and also the role of the criminal law in healthcare. Next slide, please, Daisy. Thank you. So we just wanted to tell you a little bit about the centre that you'd be joining if you do come and study with us. Um, it's a very well established centre set up by Professor Margot, Professor Margot Brazier and Professor John Harris. Um, you may be familiar with their names. Margot is a lawyer and John Harris is a philosopher. And they set up this centre in the 1980s and so we've been running courses since then. And as I said, our online provision began in 2002. So we've got a lot of experienced teaching staff um, who've taught both online and on campus, and we all have our own research interests and research profiles, and you can find more about that online if you're interested. So in terms of the courses, I think they're a real chance um, for you, whatever your background, to think a bit more about key legal and ethical issues in healthcare. We do have a lot of healthcare professionals studying, but we also have other from different backgrounds which I'll talk about in a minute but it's a chance whatever your background to talk about these issues and explore them with the tutors and with your colleagues. It might be to reflect on issues at work or just areas that you've read about and are interested in. Um, and also our students use this course for a lot of different reasons depending on their background. It might be that they want to enhance their career or that they want to actually change career paths so again it's quite an individual um, journey for our different students. It's also a great opportunity to meet people from different backgrounds. So as I said, we do draw people from a lot of different um, professions. We've had medics, nurses, pharmacists, dentists. Um, we've had people working in the law and in regulatory bodies. So you'd meet a whole bunch of different people and you have that chance to interact and share your ideas with each other. Next slide, please, David. And so this is just to show you, um, this is the academic team that work on the distance learning programmes. We do have other academic members of staff, but these are the, the key people that you would meet. Um, again, you can look up their particular interests online, but Becky Bennett, who leads the first course, um, has done a lot of research on reproductive ethics. Ron Holmes has worked a lot um, in research ethics and latterly in relation to AI. Um, Simone is very interested in gender identity and psychiatric ethics. And Ian has done a broad range of ethical research um, and he's focusing at the moment on genetics. And then on the law side, again, we've got a real spread of interest. Um, so Neil and Kirsty specialise in mental health law, as does Nicola, Trevor Thomas. And then other lawyers, Sarah, interested in clinical negligence and, and healthcare regulation. So you can see that we cover a very broad area of interest. Um, but also if there's something else that you want to explore, perhaps as a dissertation topic, we do draw on wider expertise within the law department. Um, so we're usually able to supervise whatever topic we're interested in covering. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, Daisy. So um, the next slide really just um, sets out the different um, courses that we offer. We have a suite of courses ranging from um, CPD, up to the full masters, the LLM and the MA. Um, and I'll run through the, the difference in between the different courses um, in a few minutes. Um, they're all part-time um, and they're all fully online. Um, so as you'll see there, we've got certificates in healthcare ethics, certificate in healthcare law, the postgraduate diploma, and then the full masters, which you can, um, you can choose to uh, graduate with an MA or an LLM and I'll explain the difference um, in, in a minute. Um, if you want to just, uh, that's, thanks Daisy. So the entry requirements, um, they depend on which um, course you're applying for. Um, for the certificate and the diploma, we ask for a, a minimum of a, a lower second class honours degree in a relevant discipline and relevant discipline is, is treated fairly broadly. So typically um, our students will have a background in law or some aspects of healthcare. It might be medicine, dentistry, nursing. 
um, or they might have um, some of the sort of social science background, for example, philosophy, um, sociology, religious studies, but it, it's quite broad. Um, if your first degree is from um, a non-UK university, then we would just look at the equivalent qualification to the, to the lower second class honours degree. Um, where an applicant doesn't meet that minimum requirement in exceptional circumstances, we will also look at relevant professional experience. So for example, um, an applicant um, who didn't hold the 2-2 honours degree, but had worked as a nurse for 20 years, um, we, would, we, would, we would look at that um, and we, we would probably um, make an offer on, on the basis of that professional experience for the diploma or the certificate. In relation to the, the full masters, the LLM uh, or the MA, um, we require an upper second class honours degree or equivalent as a minimum, again in a relevant um, discipline. Um, for students who are um, overseas students for whom English is not the first language, we also require um, that they demonstrate competency in English language. Um, and we ask for um, an IELTS score of seven overall with seven in writing and no subtest of less than 6.5 or whatever the equivalent is if you've done a different, um, a different test. Um, the reason why we ask for the seven in writing is because all of the assessment on our um, courses, and I'll talk a bit more about this later, is by essay, it's by coursework. So um, it is um, important that our students are able to, to, to write to a, a required standard, otherwise they would struggle really with the course. Um, thanks, Daisy. Um, so why Manchester? Um, Manchester, the University of Manchester, as many of you will know, is a leading research intensive university. So it is a research led university. Um, 25 Nobel Prize winners have worked or studied at Manchester. And in the last research excellent framework in 2014, 83% of our research was ranked as world leading or internationally excellent. Um, and as you'll have seen from uh, the previous slides, um, many of the academics who teach on our uh, distance learning master's programme are, are actively involved in, in, in research. The university was voted sixth best university in the UK and 27th best university in the world in the QS University World Rankings in 2019. And we are in the top 10 of LLMs in the world for healthcare ethics and law uh, in the latest LLM World Rankings. So I'll hand over to Catherine now. Thanks, Caroline. Um, so I expect that if you're thinking about online learning, you'll be thinking, what sort of support I'm going, am I going to get? Because it can be quite difficult when you don't have the opportunity to come on campus. So we try and offer as much support as we can to ensure that you've always got someone to ask the questions that you have and to get some support from. So just to run through the support that's available, we've got Daisy, who you know already, who's our course advisor. Um, also, once you're registered on the programme, you hear a lot from our course administrator, Leanne, um, who deals with all the day-to-day -day administration. So you get emails from Leanne and she's a point of contact if you have any queries. Um, we also have a study advisor who helps out with the more technical issues. Um, he's called Simon. And so, for example, he can help you if you're having any difficulty submitting your coursework. So he's very um, helpful on the technical side. Then, of course, for each course, you'll have academic tutors, and they're your point of contact for any questions about the academic contact, and they have a lot of um, discussions with you on the discussion boards, which, again, I'll talk to you a bit more about. Um, so they're there to answer your academic queries and to guide you through each course. There's also a lot of opportunity, as I mentioned, to um, speak with your other colleagues on our discussion boards, and um, so you do form a community with your fellow students. And then there's a lot of wider support from the university so that you can access that student wellbeing team. And one aspect that you will use a lot is the online university library, which is a massive resource. Um, particularly now that so many books are available with ebooks, we've got journal articles, ebooks, there's a massive resource there. It's amazing how much you can do at your desk 
Um, so that's a wonderful resource that will be available to you once you start your study. Next slide, thank you, Daisy. So this is just to show you some of our team. So there's Daisy, who's met already. Simon, who I mentioned, is the study advisor who helps out with the sort of technical side, and Yan, who's our course administrator. Okay, so this the next slide um, really just it, it shows you the content of the the different courses that we offer, um, and you've got a comparison here between. The, the two full master's programmes, the LLM and the MA. I think one of the questions we're often asked by, by potential uh, students, by applicants, is what's the difference between the MA and the LLM? Um, so you'll see from um, the slide here that the two, uh, the courses are exactly the same in terms of the core units. So um, in the first year of both of the full master's programmes, um, you would study the two core units, which are philosophical bioethics and medico legal problems. So, philosophical bioethics runs from September until January, um, and then you would start medico legal problems, which is the core law module, and you would study that from February until May. Um, you then get a bit of a break over the summer. And then you would start the third core module, which is international issues in healthcare law and ethics in the September of, of the second year. And you would study that until November. So at this, this point, it's exactly the same whether you're on the LLM or the MA. The difference then comes um, with the options. Um, so students that are enrolled on the LLM programme that want to graduate with the LLM, which is a Master of Laws, um, would study two law options. Um, so these are shorter courses to the core modules. Um, the first course is Medicine, Law and Society, which runs from November until the January of the second year. And then you would study Mental Health Law from the February to the April. If you are on the MA programme, then um, you've got a bit more flexibility, you've got choice. You can either study um, Medicine, Law and Society or Research Ethics from November to January of year two. Uh, and then you can choose between Mental Health Law and Ethics, Genetics and Genomics as your, as your second option. Um, so, so that's the main difference. If, you're, if, if the default is, I suppose, the MA, where you've got complete flexibility, um, but if you want to graduate with an LLM, then you have to do the two law options. You have no choice. And then once you've completed all of the taught modules, um, students on the master's would start their dissertation. So they'd normally start work on the dissertation um, around the May of the second year. Um, students who are enrolled on the LLM programme would take a law-based dissertation and students on the MA can choose whether to, to specialise in, in law or ethics in their dissertation. Um, so, so that's the, I hope that explains the essential difference between um, the two courses. So we'll go on to look at the diploma now. Um, for the postgraduate diploma in healthcare ethics and law, again, the core modules are exactly the same as the ones for the, the, the two full master's programmes. So um, in the first year, you study philosophical bioethics from the September to the January. Then you'll do medical legal problems um, and you'll complete that in the May of the first year. Have a break for the summer and then start with international issues in healthcare law and ethics in the September um, of the second year. Um, you would complete international issues in the November and then um, you would decide on your two options and you'd have a choice um, of medicine, law and society or research ethics, first of all. And then when you'd completed that, the first option, you would then choose between mental health law or ethics, genetics and genomics, um, which you would study from the February to April. And the certificates, again, slightly different. Um, again, you're doing fewer credits here with the certificate. So the certificate in healthcare ethics begins with philosophical bioethics, the core module, which you study from the September of year one until the January. 
and then you would study your first option, ethics, genetics and genomics from February until April. And then you'd have a bit of a break and you would pick up again in the November of the second year with research ethics, which you complete in the January. And then for the certificate in healthcare law, this course starts in um, the February. It's, it's, it's it, because you start with the core module, the core law module in the February. Um, you would study medical legal problems until May, and then you would have a bit of a break until November when you would study the first law option, medicine, law and society. And then you would study your second law option, mental health law and policy between February and April. Um, if you want to get more information about the, the contents of all these um, individual course units, there's, there's more information on, on the website that you can, you can have a look at that for more information. Thanks, Karen. Um, so just to talk a bit about how the course actually works um, in terms of how you would be studying. We're often asked, well, how many hours a week will I be expected to work? And this is always a very difficult one to answer because people work at different rates. Some people um, do more work one week and then less the next. There's often sort of an extra amount of work needed in the run up to assessments. We say as a rough guide about 15 hours per week, but it is very variable because some students want to get into depth with everything, others are happy to just skim certain topics and read more in depth than others. So this is only a guide um, because everyone is quite different. Um, delivery is by, as you've heard us talk about Blackboard, which is our virtual learning environment. And in a moment I'll show you what that looks like quickly. Um, you're sent for each course in normal circumstances you would be sent a hard copy of each course materials and it's available on blackboard at the moment we're just doing online because we haven't got anyone on campus to be able to distribute the hard copies but hopefully um once campus is back open we'll be back to giving you a hard copy of the course materials um for each course unit and students say they like that because if they're off traveling somewhere they can take the hard copy with them or they can just look at it online, you can look at it on your phone, your tablet, wherever. So it's quite accessible, whatever method you like to use. Um, the other thing to stress, I think people are often concerned as to whether they can do it fully online or whether they do have to attend campus at all. And the answer is you can do it completely online. There's no need for you to come onto campus. So we're always glad to see you if you do want to attend some of our events. Um, we do run an optional study day and um, this year it had to be cancelled unfortunately due to COVID but hopefully next year it will be back running again um, and that's a nice opportunity for you to come onto campus and meet some of the other students in your programme and your course tutors but again that's completely optional, you don't have to attend. You'll also as I mentioned use the online library a great deal and you'll become familiar with how that works but that, that is a very good resource. You'll also get a lot of support from your tutors and it's really up to you how you take that. Some people just want to interact on the discussion board online. Some people want to have a quick phone call if they're struggling with something or maybe a Skype call. So we're willing to be flexible, however helps you. Um, different people want a different approach and that's fine. And one of the key things we do is to post activities on Blackboard and again we like you to interact but we appreciate sometimes people are very busy so you might not be able to, to do that all the time but it's there and it's nice to see students engaging um, on our virtual learning environment. So this is just um, a page just to give you some idea so each course will have a page like this and it gives you sort of announcements and you can click through to the discussion board you can see on the left hand side. So you've got all the information in one place, which I think is helpful. Um, so when assessments are posted, there's a link from that. So that becomes the way that you navigate around all the requirements for the course. Next slide please, Daisy. Thanks, Daisy. So um, in relation to um, assessment, um, all of the course units on the certificates, the diploma and the full masters are assessed by coursework. So there are no exams. It's all coursework. Um, for the, the core units, so that's um, philosophical bioethics, medical legal problems and international issues, um, you will um, write um, assignments, essays um, of uh, 6,000 words each 
Um, but what we tend to do is we split those into two smaller pieces of work. Um, and the reason why we do that is to enable you to get some feedback um, partway through the, 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 the essay writing process. Um, I'm sure some of you probably haven't written an essay for some time and you might be feeling a bit nervous about writing essays again. Um, we do provide quite a lot of support for that. Um, but the, the first piece of work that you would, you, would, you would do if you were on the diploma or the master's um, is um, philosophical bioethics, um, the first assignment, um, which would be a, a quite short, a short piece of work of around two and a half thousand words. Um, and you would get some feedback on that um, before you submit your, your, your second uh, essay, which would be a longer piece of work around about three and a half thousand words so that you've got a little bit of guidance and a bit of help and you, you, you know, we can fix um, anything that's not quite right before you submit the, the, the second um, longer essay. And then for the, for the options, um, because they are shorter courses, um, the, um, the coursework is, is a slightly shorter piece of work. So for the, for the options, you will do one um, piece of coursework with a word uh, limit of 4,000 words. Um, students who are taking the full masters, the LLM or the MA, um, will also write a dissertation, which is your final module. Um, the word limit for the dissertation is 10 to 12,000 words. And this is um, an independent research project. So you choose your own topic. Um, and um, obviously it, it needs to be on some aspect of healthcare ethics and law. Um, students who are on the LLM program have to write a law-based dissertation. Students on the MA can choose law or ethics. Um, we will allocate you a supervisor, which will usually be a member of our, our own internal academic team. Um, and so you will have some guidance. You will have someone there in the background to give you some support um, and give you some feedback on um, drafts of your chapters of your dissertation. Um, something that I meant to mention earlier, um, so I'll mention it now. Um, sometimes students... Um, when they're applying are not sure whether they want to go for the full masters um, and they might decide well actually I, I think I'll just go for the diploma initially see how I get on see how confident I feel about writing essays before I commit to writing a dissertation um, and, and, and that's fine um, if you're a bit nervous about whether you about you know how you're going to perform um, and you're worried about um, committing to the full masters, you can apply for the diploma um, and then provided your grades and the taught modules are at master's level, which is a, you need a grade of at least 50% for each of the taught modules, you can apply then to um, step up to the full masters um, and you would, then, um, you would then complete the dissertation. Um, so, so that option is, is available if you're not really sure about whether you want to commit to the full masters um, at the outset. Um, as I said earlier as well, um, some of you might be a bit nervous about essay writing, you might not have written an essay for, for some time, you might have been away from education for quite a while. Um, and we will provide um, support for, for, for uh, essay writing as part of our induction process, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, and there are also other resources as well that you can access. Um, the University Library has created some, um, some great resources as part of its My Learning Essential series, which provides sort of, uh, support to um, all students in the university on academic skills like essay writing and research. So you'd have access to all of that information as well. Um, so induction. Um, what happens next? What happens once you've accepted your offer, hopefully with us? Um, you will receive um, a welcome letter with joining information in, uh, in early September and information about how to register from um, Leanne, our course administrator. Um, in in non-COVID times, we normally have um, a, an on-campus induction day. Um, so we would welcome our campus-based students and our uh, distance learning students together and we'd have a full day of activities on campus 
Um, we're not going to be able to do that this year because of uh, COVID. So this year, the induction will all be online, it'll be fully online. Um, the um, induction sessions will be delivered via our virtual learning environment, Blackboard, um, and will consist of pre-recorded videos um, and activities that you can just download and listen to at your own pace in your own time. Um, it will give you a chance to meet some of your tutors because um, lots of us who are teaching you are on the course will, will, will be involved in delivering these, these induction sessions. So you'll get a chance to meet us. Um, and there'll also be opportunities to meet each other through chat tools and so on, um, so that you get, to, uh, you, know, you get to know each other a little bit as well. Um, so you'll be able to access the uh, online induction sessions during week commencing the 21st of September. And you'll also start your studies of the first core module, Philosophical Bioethics, that week as well. Um, there will also be um, a live um, induction um, session just for an hour, which will be an introduction to, to Blackboard, which is our virtual learning environment. And that will be run by Simon um, Cohn, who is one of the study advisors. Um, Catherine and I will drop into that as well and say hello. Um, and again, you'll get you'll get information about the, the, the exact time of that session um, in your in your joining letter. Don't worry if you can't attend. Um, it will be recorded, and the recording of that session will be available for you to, to download with the other induction sessions as well. Um, if you feel that you need a bit of support with with Blackboard, with with navigating your way around. Um, the virtual learning environment, again, you, you can book um, a one-to-one -one with, with, with Simon separately. Not everybody needs that, but some of you might feel you need a bit more support. Thanks, Daisy. Great. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, I am your course advisor. So my role is to, to really support you during your application and kind of decision-making process. Um, this is my email address. Um, as a follow up to this webinar, I will send you the recording so you can listen back to remind yourself of, of what we covered. But please do get in touch with me if you've, you've got any questions you want to kind of discuss your circumstances, your kind of thought process, decision making thought process. I'm happy to kind of support you in, in that decision making. So we've had a few questions come through. So thank you so much. Um, for being a very chatty bunch on today's webinar. So I've got a few questions that I'll probably pitch to, to both Caroline and, and Catherine. Um, so I am interested in the LLM, but I'm not UK based. Is this a problem? Shall I answer that? Um, no, it, no, it's not a problem. Um, so long as you've got the, so long as you, you've got the, you satisfy the, the, the minimum entry requirement for the LLM, which is the minimum of a, of a 2-1 or equivalent if it's an overseas degree um, then that then, then we would we would we, we would act, we would make an offer for the LLM. I think the only thing to add maybe is that the law you will study is predominantly England and Wales um, in international issues we do look at a more global um, um, approach to healthcare law but just to be aware that mm. in the main law modules you'll be focusing on the law in England and Wales. Great, thank you. And one thing to mention just, just quickly on kind of the application and the requirements that, that we need from, from you if you're looking to submit your application, we'll need kind of transcripts of your studies, degree certificate and a completed application form. Now you can find that on our website, but I'm happy to kind of resend that to you if, if you need that. And once our admissions team have got those documents, they will review it and then ultimately make that final decision. Um, but yeah, thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so I've had a, a question, another one come through. Is the mental health law just England and Wales? Is there any Scot Scottish law? Caroline, do you know, I, my feeling is it's England and Wales, but you might be more familiar. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, um, yeah, I think the, the, the law, apart from international issues, the, I think all the law courses focus on the law in England and Wales. Um, I don't know the detail of the course, but I'm pretty I think that would certainly be the focus yeah great thank you and then somebody said thank you for an excellent webinar well, I'm glad you enjoyed it um, and <laughs> if they were to um, take the LLM what can they get, go on to do after that with kind of the future LLM 
I suppose it partly depends on your background, what you've done already. Um, we have had people go and work with the GMC, for example. So once they've got maybe a medical background and they've added the LLM, that's enabled them to move into that. Um, we've got one of our very first students is one of our colleagues, um, Dr. Sarah Devani. So she went on to an academic career after completing what was then the MA. You could only do the MA at that point. We then um, developed the LLM. So it really depends on where you're coming from and where you want to come to. Um, and if you wanted to get in touch with us independently, we can chat a bit more about your individual circumstances than, than do. Great, thank you. And I've had somebody ask a question. They've applied for the LLM, but are now considering the MA um, as they're interested in a few, few of the units of the course. In order to do them, would they have to have more of a medical background? In order to do the MA rather than the... Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, the, 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 the entry requirements are essentially exactly the same with the LLM or the MA. Um, and it is, as I said earlier, it's possible to, to switch. If, if you think, if you, if you start off on one programme and then you think you're on the wrong one, it's quite easy to transfer over to the other one. Um, the difficulty would be moving to the LLM where you've already, you couldn't do that if you'd already studied ethics options. Um, so um, it, it, would, it would be quite straightforward to switch from the LLM to the MA. It's less straightforward the other way around, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but the entry requirements would be the same. You don't need to have a medical background for, for the MA or the LLM. Brilliant, thank you. And I've had a, another question um, about um, putting an application in now for September 2021. Now, yes, you can absolutely do that. We would just defer your place. Um, so please get in touch with me um, and talk to me about your circumstances. I, I can talk to our admissions team, but that's absolutely no problem at all if you want to, to get an application in now or start the process for, for kind of September 2021. Um, I've got a few more questions, if you, if you don't mind, Caroline and Catherine. Um, let me just go through them. If a student does not have a 2-1 at undergraduate level, but has a UK master's, will that qualify for the LLM entry point? We'd have to look at the master's qualification, really, I think. I think it's hard to say as a blanket, yes or no, but we would certainly look at it and take into account what it was in and what your grades were. Yeah, so it'd be worth putting in an application and then we'd look at the transcripts and look at to see if there's sufficient evidence of academic strength. And the other thing to say is you could always apply for the diploma because it's quite common for people to apply for the diploma to see how they do and then they decide they do want to carry on and do the full LLM or MA um, and by that time they've got more idea of their marks and if they're at that sort of standard so that's another option. Great. Thank you. And then a student has asked, um, they're interested in doing the postgraduate certificate in law, um, but they've noticed that it's 15 months. Is it possible to complete the course in a shorter amount of time than the, than the 15 months? Unfortunately, not at the moment. And the reason is resource based so that you have to do the modules at the same time that the master's programmes are doing them. So in an ideal world, we'd love to be able to offer more flexibility, but you do have to do it in line with the rest of the cohort so I'm afraid it does take 15 months. And that kind of leads us on to a, a kind of the, the final question just because I'm conscious of time. Are students able to kind of take a break from their studies? So for example for maternity leave is there a time limit on completion? Can they pause their studies if, if they would like to? Yes um, it is possible um, to apply for an interruption of studies um, if something like something like pregnancy would be a, a good reason for that, um, or you know something unexpected, ill health, um, you, it, it, there is a procedure whereby students can apply for an interruption of studies. Um, there has to be a sort of formal application. And it has to be approved by um, our director for teaching and learning. Um, but that that there. With, this, with these programmes, because many of our students are working full time, obviously sometimes unexpected things happen um, and students do need to, to, to pause. So that, 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 that is 
um, an option, but there is a sort of formal application process that somebody would have to go through. Great. I'm just going to ask one more question and then we'll wrap up. Um, but thank you to, to everyone on today's call for, for being so chatty and, and asking all these questions. Are there any, so I know that there's quite a lot of pre-recorded material. Are there any live kind of lectures or seminars that, that happen at the same time that students can be a part of? No, is the answer to that, I think. Um, well, not, not in terms of um, classes, because, because the course is designed as a fully online course. Um, the idea is that students who study should be able to study in their own time at a time that suits them. Um, so it, it's designed in that way, so it's really accessible um, and, and you can pick it up and study it at your own time. What we, what, what, I, what we do do though is there will be um, some um, sort of synchronous um, opportunities to chat to tutors um, I think that's right, isn't it, Catherine? Um, so we might have, for example, um, an online office hour um, when we would say to students, you know, I'll be sitting here um, with my um, computer on, available for you to have a live discussion with me if you've got questions about the module. So there will be that sort of synchronous engagement, um, but there won't be any um, sort of live seminar and any sort of live seminars because it is designed as a fully online course. Um, the only caveat that is that we do like to have a study day as Catherine talked about this earlier. So in, in non-COVID times we would normally have a study day in May um, where we would invite all of our distance learning students onto campus and we'd have a full day of, of sort of live classes. Um, and, and a chance to sort of interact with each other as well as interact with the tutors. Hopefully we'll be able to do that next year. We had to cancel it this year, but that would be our intention. And the other thing is to say that quite often students live within reach of Manchester, we've found, and we get people from all over the country, but a significant number are in the Northwest. And in that case, you're very welcome to come onto campus and come to our seminar series, which we run during term time, again, in normal times. Um, so hopefully next academic year we may get back to be able to have some events on campus mm -hmm. and if so you're invited to those and you're very welcome to attend. Great, thank you Caroline, thank you Catherine and thanks to everyone who's uh, joined us today. Like I said, um, this is my email address. Now I know there's some questions that we haven't got a chance to kind of cover today, but what I will do is I will email you um, some responses to those. Um, but please do get in, in touch with me if you want to chat with me via Zoom um, or just via email or even over the phone. I'm happy to kind of support you in, in your decision making process. But again, thank you so much, Caroline, Catherine, thanks for your time. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thanks for coming, everyone. Bye. Nice to meet you all. Bye.